What is up everybody, Ron Blue back again on another video for you guys. Today we're going to be doing a reaction video to another Kanye West Sunday service live. This song in particular is St. Pablo. It's actually one of my favorite songs off of the life of Pablo. So I'm just curious to see how he actually remixed this one into a Sunday service song. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Oh, he's doing it live, so. So it looked like, let's go back a little bit, because what it looked like he he was doing was actually about to rap, but the mic wasn't on or, or something audio-wise wasn't all the way there. So it looks like he cued them just to do the uh, intro or really the verse, I'm sorry, the chorus of the song. You hear him? Yeah. There's Nori. Yeah, that's why he said, go ahead. You know, I think the, one of the reasons why I missed so many of these uh, Sunday services was because I actually paid money to see Jesus is King in theaters with my wife. Uh, she was my girlfriend at the time, but um, and it, it was so trash. Like it was like very disappointing. I'm like, OK, there has to be something after this, like the ending credit or anything. There was nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, so from there, I guess I just kind of tuned out of the Sunday service, uh, concerts or performances, um, until Jesus King, Jesus is King came out and then we moved on to, what was it? Donda, I think was the next one where he technically came out with the all choir album that really nobody probably has heard since, but, uh, <laughs> then they went back, then they went into Donda. So that's why this, I guess I'm like, again, that's why I felt like I was just so tuned out of any, anything dealing with Sunday service because of that experience. I'm like, we couldn't wait because I actually, like they kept selling out actually. That was a crazy part too. They were selling out in the theaters um, as if he was there in the theaters. It was ridiculous, but we went to Livonia, Michigan and saw but was 20 minutes of uh, hoopla. <laughs> See, and this was that chorus was the introduction to Sampha for me. I didn't know who Sample was. I never heard of him. But you, it, I don't know if you guys ever realize that there's a repetitive um, voicing that people use very often. So to me, I feel like the first person that I remember that had a sound like this was James Blake. 
If you guys have never heard of Retrograde, listen to that album. It is a it's an eye opener. It's it's such a musical album. It's really really good. Then Sanfa, then uh, Giveon, and then Friday. They all have that same voice, um, that unique voice. But it sounds they very they sound very very similar. Um, and you often find them on courses like um, with Friday for I mean because he's a little bit newer so. He was on uh, God Did with DJ Khaled. They counted us out. But I know God did. Same thing as like a Semfa type sound. So um, you guys let me know in the comments if I missed anybody over the years. But I think it really started with James Blake. And now currently we have uh, Friday. Um with that type of sound. Why why is that anyway? Yeah, if you guys know, let me know in the comments. That's that's just very interesting. But anyway, um it was such a unique sound. Uh this is what I like about a choir. Like the last the last one that I did a reaction to was uh Can't Tell Me Nothing. Now that again that like I was saying that's very sample based. So I didn't like the choir kind of emulating what they, you know, what they got out of a heavily sampled song. Um, I think it took away from the song in a way. But this actually amplifies the song a little bit more. Um, and I think it's just because it's an actual person, Sampha, actually singing the song. So they just add that much more dynamic to it, if that makes sense. Let's uh, continue, though. They got horns this time. I just feel like I'm the only one not pretending I'm not out of control. I'm just not in a control. So look. That was like... Oh, man. So just to give some back history to where I was in life uh, when I first heard this album. Uh, I was with my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. And we were, I think we were at my grandma's house, I believe. And of course, Kanye had been saying like, oh, this album is coming out. Now, this is like the first time that we've seen Kanye with this much, or really an artist with this much control over an album that he'll say it's coming out this day. And then the whole day goes and he doesn't say anything. It just doesn't go come out. It was that, like... And then every since then, it's been like that with Kanye. But this was the first time, The Life of Pablo, um, where he kept saying, I was going to come out this day, or I was going to come out that day, or it's going to come out this day. So finally, we get to Friday, right? And it does not come out. <laughs> it does not come out. I um, believe that is the 15th of February, 2016. I believe so. Uh because I believe it came out on the 16th. So anyway, well, I know it came out on a Saturday because 
I do remember when he went on Saturday Night Live, and it's still up until his performance. It did not come out yet. Um, so we're, you know, um, we're watching his performance, and he was doing Ultralight Beam with Chance the Rapper, uh, Kelly Price, um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the choir was on there. I don't know. I'm. I, I, it was it was a little while ago now, but I just remember seeing this, and like at the end of the performance, he's on the floor, right? And I hope I hope I could find this performance, but he was on the floor, on the yeah on the floor or on on the floor of the stage, and then he gets up like. Life of Pablo all right now. Life of Pablo all right now like that. So I'm like, let's do it. So now, you know, we looking. Uh, I think it was a title I might have been on or something like that. I can't remember. Title, Apple Music. Now I have all of them at this point today. But back then, I think I was really a huge fan of title. So I was really trying to go with the movement of what Jay-Z, you know, uh, that platform but anyway, so it finally popped up on there. But St. Pablo was not on this album. There were like at least two songs, two or three songs that was not on this album when it first came out. And then there were some songs that were actually, I'm not going to say unfinished, but um, he tweaked it again. Um, he tweaked it again. Uh after uh, after it was already out. And that's probably one of the first times that an artist has done that as well. Um, because it was almost like a, uh, what's the word? Like a evolving art piece. Because every time you listen to it, almost weekly, something else will be tweaked, whether it was horns on this song or it was taken out, whatever the case was. So it was like an evolving art piece, which was the first of its kind. I really feel like, especially with the digital age, I feel like um, that really helped move it towards, you know, um, that direction. Um, but then, so he finally added St. Pablo on there. And it was one of the last songs on the album, or is the last song on the album. And I was like, whoa. Like, because there's the first half of the album where he has, I feel like, if you want to call them radio hits, he has the radio hits. And then the, like, Real Friends, On Up, you got 30 Hours, No More Parties in L.A., that's when he really get to rapping, like whether it was written for him or not, he he just started blazing, and it was just ridiculous. On like I'm like this dude is having fun, man. Like, and this was a long ways from Jesus, um, and it was it was just a it was just a moment, man. It was just a moment, like wow, this dude found that groove, like you know his fashion uh deal with a, i don't know if it was with adidas at that time it could have been but you know he signed some major major deals so you could tell musically he was just in a happier place like i said before i'm a fan of users and i'll kind of explain that um in another video maybe um on why i like that album but uh but anyway let's continue with this Closest thing to Einstein. So don't worry about me, I'm fine. With the big house, did it way different. It's true, though. It's Medusa. Make it past 25. 
you know what I really like about that last verse? Um, the ultimate Gemini has arrived. I wasn't supposed to, or has survived. I wasn't supposed to make it past 25. And the one of the first songs, actually, um, that I heard from Kanye, actually, and this might have been... I'm just trying to think if it was before or after I heard Can't Tell Me Nothing. I think I heard Can't Tell Me Nothing. So this might have been like 08, 09 or something like that. I heard, um, we want some puzzle, make it past 25. Joe saw you, is still alive. Throw your hands up in the sky and say, we don't care what people say. That was off that first album, um, College Dropout. But of course, when I tried to, this was before Genius, way before Shazam, like, like, this was just a different time where lyrics, when you type in lyrics, they weren't just popping up as easy as they are now. This was before Rap Genius as well. Um, so I looked for that song because I was with one of my cousin's friends when I first heard that. Um, and that's also too <laughs> random enough. That was when I first heard uh, Maybach Music too. With T-Pain and Kanye and Wayne and uh Yeah, that was that was just a that was just a crazy time. But it was song after song that I was really like hearing and I like would try to go back and try to look it up and I could not find these lyrics. I could not find the songs. I mean it was it was it was tough, man. But then when I finally went back to you know, well years have passed years did pass and then of course I listened to it. I'm like that's the song that I heard back in like 08, 09, whatever. So it's just crazy how um, time flies and where you were when you listen to these songs. Uh, but let's continue. I feel like I was going somewhere with that, with that point, by the way. I don't know. Oh, that's where I was going. That's where I was going. I feel like I had to say it out loud to figure out where I was going with that. But I liked how, you know, he related that way back to the early songs that he made. We wasn't supposed to make it past 20. We don't care, right? So I was like, that's dope. I love, like, when artists relate certain lyrics back to kind of like those hidden gems because we don't care, um, was it like uh, Jesus walks or uh, spaceships or um, or any or diamonds? You know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't one of those type songs. It's like if you heard it, you heard it. But it's something that you really don't re you know play on repeat unless you just like the song. So a lot of people really did, probably forgot that that was a song. So when I first heard that, I was like, oh, this dude rapping, man. This dude, man. But then you find out the writers go on Rap Genius when you guys get a chance and look at the um, people that actually wrote this particular song. And I'm not even going to say any names, but once you see that, it makes a whole lot more sense as to how he was, you know, flowing like this. It was, it, I mean, it was amazing, honestly. Oh, <laughs> I like how it goes right back into the piano. Wait, let's go back a little bit. That's hard. Yeah, I like that. Um, What do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this? Uh, drop it in the comments. Um, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. This is the only channel where you're going to be getting videos like this. Uh, guitar covers, guitar lessons, and so much more. Um, if you guys have any recommendations of songs that you guys want me to react to, drop it in the comments. 
I I have fallen way behind on guitar lessons, but I promise you guys I'm gonna get back to them. These are just a little bit easier for me to work with. So that's what I've been doing, especially with this job now that I have. It's just been really um, extremely busy, but I'm trying to dedicate time for for you guys. So here we are. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.